What up folks, I'm Ultrazilla and today I have a review of the Super 7 MMPR Ultimate SDCC Exclusive Black and Gold Dragon Zord. That's alright my zillions. We got a SDCC Exclusive here that I got at Big Bad Toy Store. And we unboxed this already and it looked pretty cool. Here is the box. Strutting a lot of gold. There is the Dragon Zord in black and gold, which is a very classic color combo for Mecha. Uh, and you know, especially these guys in this line, I mean, right back there you see my black and gold uh, Dragon Legacy Dragon Zord. And we're gonna definitely look at that in this review. So, without any further ado, let's get to that review. And uh, here is the Dragon Zord out of the package. And for you continuity zillions, um, I took this guy out of the package. I did film the opening. Then I uh, used this guy in the Thirsty for Blood Godzilla uh, review for size comparisons. And now, now we're getting to the review. Let's start out though with accessories. Comes with two Fist hands. Yes, it does. In gold and black, and uh, both hands look pretty good, I have to say. We also uh, get the missile firing hands, inspired by Mecha Godzilla. Uh, yes, yes, I mean, that, this whole Dragon's Order is inspired by Mecha Godzilla. That, that's a known thing. Um, looks really, really nice. I love the uh, red tips. You know, the little missile tips looks really cool. Both hands are painted very well. I like the gold that they use on this figure. It's a, it's a nice dark gold, which I think is works really, really well. So these look really good. Now, the interesting thing is there is a third set of hands that comes with... Uh, well, that's a third set of hands. There's a fourth set of hands that comes with uh, the regular release, and that's with the missiles firing out. I don't know why they didn't include it here. Uh, my guess is probably too hard to, you know, uh, do a gold variant of it. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I, I don't have that info for you. Uh, I just hope it's, it wasn't canceled on the regular release because that was one of the coolest things, uh, you know, selling that regular release. Anywho, uh, you get some cool hands. Uh, last but not least, we have... Oh, no, actually, that's not, not, not true. We have one more after this. Uh, we have the Green Ranger here. Yeah, uh, he looks all right. I mean, uh, his helmet looks a little weird. Uh, but I, I, it's t tiny. I mean, look, at it's like almost... It's just a little bit bigger than uh, my thumbnail. So, um, yeah, I mean, look. You got the gold paint for the dragon shield on there that you can see very well. You can see the dragon dagger very well. Um, it's painted on the back, you know, come on, this is, this is not bad. Uh, I don't know if it's going to stand well on his shoulder because, yeah, because it's kind of slanted. Um, oh yeah, well, we got it. Oh, well, he's hugging him. Almost. I mean, the, if I move him back a little bit, I'm sure we could do it. Uh, you know, we'd, I'm sure we'd be able to finagle it if we needed to for photography. But it's a cool little addition. Lastly, uh, uh, we uh, get this awesome die-cast coin. This is cool. We got Zord on Z there. We got the uh, Dragon Zord symbol. Really, really nicely done. We saw this, uh, obviously, with the um, T-Rex Zord as well. This is just nice. It's so heavy. Uh, I really, really like it. It looks really good. Very well done. So these are awesome. I gotta say, and I just love the diecast content. All right, let's bring this guy in. Let's do articulation now because um, I feel like the look of this figure and the articulation are kind of tied a little bit, and I'm gonna talk about why uh, shortly. The mouth opens and closes. I talked about it a little bit, I believe, in the unboxing. Um, then the arms, just like the old toys, the arms just go up and down here, and then, uh, the wrists are on, like, hinged, 
you know, joints. And I'm getting some paint flecking out onto my desk as I turn that around. So I, the paint from around here is kind of flecking out. So but you get that. Uh, then this is a really nice free moving thing here, but I just, I was just going to say, that's a magnet for chipping paint. And there you go. Hmm. Uh, because it comes down all the way down, and I just felt like I, I, I feel like I just did it. <sighs> Both sides are chipped. That is a frustrating. But it moves freely. Just maybe don't go all the way down, or be very careful when you do. Ah, that's a bummer. That is a bummer. I, j I didn't really notice it until I, I did it just now. That it was so up against it. Ah, uh, then the legs move like so. There is a hinge in there. Little, little wobbly, in my opinion. A little bit too wobbly. Hinge at the knee. Can swivel a bit as well. It is a little bit hindered. Rocker at the foot. Back and forth. Works pretty decent. Then you got tail articulation. Now the, the tail for this guy it does come on in the package. The packaging is very different. It's huge because of it. So this all moves nicely. I have to say pretty nicely. It just spins. So a little bit wobbly in the legs. Bummer here with the paint. Um, but yeah. So that is the articulation. All right. So, but let's talk about this guy in full. And we're going to start out with a couple of those things, right? Well, that's a bummer. We already said that. Um, but I, I, that was something I didn't know. The, the thing that, and I did say this in the unboxing, um, I'm really surprised that they went with this for the arms. Um, like, the Dragon Zord in the show has way freer arm movement. Why they went... I mean, <laughs> they do a lot of toyetic stuff, you know? That's for sure. But I don't feel like the figure itself looks like one of the older toys too much. Uh, maybe a little bit, but, you know, I, I just think they had the opportunity to give us, like, like an awesome, like, Dragon Zone like we haven't had before, where, you know, all you needed to do is either... Just make this a little wider, a little gappier, so you could get some back and forth moving in this way from the arms. But I, I think it, it should have, because the Dragon Zord really can. I mean, you can stretch it out, but I don't know if I'm breaking anything here with doing that. You know what I'm saying? He can move around. I What I will say with the other thing I was saying, um, with the movement, unfortunately, you know, that happens. But... The way this is free gives it a kind of suit kind of feel, uh, which I do like. Because there is aspects of this that it kind of reminds me of the suit, and then some aspects that don't. Um, I, the legs and the waist, the way it moves, like, Dragon's Lord does a lot of that, which is good. Um, so, I, I, I know a lot. <laughs> Dragon's Lord is, you know, a fave. But at the same time, it's not completely accurate. Like, the neck should be a bit longer. Um, his head just looks a little scrunched in. That said, I still like the look of this guy. And he's pretty impressive in person. He's huge. But those legs are ginormous compared to the body. So I feel like that a little bit extra neck <laughs> would have went a long way. Now, I'm definitely, you know, this part you can't do anything about. But... Yeah, the arms, I feel like. That, that, that is a missed opportunity, in my opinion. Um, you know, I don't usually like talking about what's not here in a figure. But that, that to me, uh, is a design, design decision that I'm, you know, I'm a little sad about. You could have just, you know, widened this a little bit. Um, you know, even some of the other toys is a little more wider here. And just give them some more arm movement, in my opinion. But anywho, let's move on. And we'll start with the head sculpt, which does look really nice. Like I said, it does look a little bit scrunched in, but the eyes look good. The, the nose looks good. The mouth looks good. 
it's just black in there, but it looks all good, like on the side profile. It definitely has the Dragon Zord look. I really like that. I like all of this stuff here, nice ornamental. I like his um, crest, all of that looks good. The paint looks good there. The red here looks good, except I have one little blob of extra paint right there. I wonder if I could file that off. We'll see. Um, but the head sculpt all in all looks very, very nice. Going down a bit, these parts here look good. The silver going down the chest looks really nice. The red balls looks really good. Gold around that. Hey, wait a second. Silver and gold. I almost forgot. It's been a while. Then all of this is done very well. I like it a lot. Both sides. Look at a little... Ooh. I can't tell. Something's going on here. I might have like a little... I, I don't want to do that too much. The arms do look okay. These are a little plain, but the hands, these hands are more relaxed hands, look fine. Um, then the Z here looks good with a red behind that. The belt, you know, that goes around the waist looks really nice. Very well done. This is just done in black over here, but it's fine. You got more uh, uh, gold paint up here that looks good. Then the back of the legs, no paint at all in the back of the legs. But on the side of the legs, you have the dragon sword symbol there, and that looks really good against the red. The front of the legs look really good. The knees, these parts here, the feet. I love the big feet. I do. I I, I mean, I you know, I'm saying it's bigger, but like, I, I do love the big giant feet. Where, where are your feet? I, I like that. I don't know. I'm, I'm a big feet type of guy. <laughs> Um, around here we saw the Z, down here it looks good, do have a little paint chipping there, so I'm getting a little bit of paint chipping here and there, um, which is a bummer. So, yeah, it is what it is, what are you gonna do? It happens. It shouldn't happen, but it happens. I think the, the, the sculpt work on the legs looks pretty good overall. Sculpt on the tail is pretty nice too, you just get the gold paint going down this way. Um, the drill tail looks very nice in gold as well. I like the tail, I think it came out pretty good, nothing uh, wrong with it, you know. Um, maybe a little more paint on the top and bottom would have been good, but at the same time, it's not so bad. Overall, I'm gonna say I like this guy, I do have some uh, both some issues, um, which is caused by the sculpt. Not like, you know, I, I don't want to keep doing it, but yeah, as you see, uh, I'm going to have to go back and check my unboxing if I have anything already out of the box, but I felt like I just did that, uh, which is a bummer. But, and I, you know, I, I wish his arms uh, in the articulation department, but it's not just an articulation department. It's the overall look of Dragon's Lord. It would just be cooler if you'd be able to make his arms go out because his arms does go out in the show a lot, you know. Um, and, you know, when you're making a toy that's just an action figure, you don't have to really conform to this, you know, completely. I mean, they took some other liberties with the design. I think that would have been a, a really good place to uh, do something there. So... That's a missed opportunity in my opinion, but overall I do like it. For your size comparisons, first up here he is with the other SDCC Super 7 Ultimates exclusive that I got, the Thirsty for Blood Godzilla. Uh, and as I said in that video, he is uh, shorter than Dragon Zord. Dragon Zord is a big, big figure. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, it's it. They still kind. Of, they still scale together, uh, in my opinion. You can still use them together, but I'm, I'm surprised he's that big, you know? Here it is with the other two Toho Ultimates so far. Uh, and I kind of dig how Biolanti looks with him, so that's yeah, not so bad. But bringing it over to the MMPR Ultimates, here he is with Goldar and the T-Rex Zord. And, uh, you know, when you bring in Goldar, you can kind of see, like, that the way they make Goldar, I guess, is more for... Um, you know, the regular figures, he's like a normal size Goldar, because I feel like he doesn't scale too well with these guys. He should be bigger, if anything. But I love the way these two uh, scale together. I think it looks perfect. 
Here he is with two other uh, Dragon Zords uh, with Super 7's own Super uh, Cyborg, which is a very nice piece, honestly. And uh, the Soul of a uh, Chogokin version, and they actually stand exactly the same height, but proportionally very, very different. Uh, and I forgot that this guy actually did this. Like, you could disattach this um, for that kind of movement, so... That's pretty awesome. Um, uh, and I wish this, this one was able to do that. Uh, because it, it, I feel like it needs to. Um, but as you can see here, I, you know what it is, honestly? It's just, I think the way they did this is very chunky. Let's, let's bring these guys in a little bit closer. Um, the way they designed this is a little chunky there. But I like his face a lot. And I feel like it's more accurate show-wise than uh, the Soul of Chogokin. So, um, I, you know, I mean, give and take, right? Give and take. Um, I, I, I do feel like this face looks more more like the show. And here it is with uh, the Legacy, Bandai Legacy version, uh, which is probably my favorite Dragon Zord, both versions, you know, which is actually right there behind the regular version. Uh, but I, I feel like he only needed one. Like, overall, looks-wise, this this is the most gorgeous, um, you know, Dragon Zord. Uh, I think it's just awesome. I actually don't own the original, so there's that. Uh, but, you know, the, you know, Bandai Legacy ones were so heavy and so awesome. And, you know, I, I chose the regular version of it over the Solo Chogokin in the comparison video. I just love it so much more. I feel like it evokes the suit a lot more and and this one does do this as well because again i forget transformation so it was able to do that for in my head i, I felt like it didn't but maybe the old one didn't but that had a transform too so i don't know um almost makes this even more of a bummer that they you know didn't figure out how to do that uh figure out something to do there you know because it this is an action figure <laughs> you know uh but I don't know. I still love this one. This is uh, amazing. I do feel like that head sculpt is pretty accurate here, along with the neck. It's got the fatness. It's got, like, you know, I just, I don't know. I bet and I Legacy did an amazing job with this Dragon Zord. It's still my, my favorite Dragon Zord. Um, but I do like what they did here, and uh, I feel like, you know, this, this proportionally and everything doesn't really feel like suit accurate it feels like an amazing and amazing toy this does feel the more i look at it the more i look at video except for like the skinniness and you know the length of the neck i feel like they captured the feel of the suit very well here in my opinion and my final thoughts you know th this good and this bad here you know like it's not perfect but i do like it there's a charm to it that's that's really cool i think my biggest issue is i wish they freed up the arms a little bit, figured out what to do there because yeah, maybe just even made this hole a little bit bigger. So I think got some sort of movement, outward movement. The Dragon Zord does open up his arms a lot in the show and battles. So, you know, and, and like in my head, I was like, oh yeah, like the, the toys, you know, were, were kind of stuck like this. And maybe some toy was like maybe the original, but the ones I have here, they could butterfly open a little bit because of transformation. So. Um, you know, I, that that went out the window <laughs> as I did my comparisons there. But overall, you know, and the other thing is, you know, the paint scratching, you know, that the way this, this is designed, uh, if you're not careful, you could scratch a line. I would, I'm going to say I wasn't careful. So that's a warning to you if you haven't gotten this or, you know, I don't know if a lot of people have gotten the regular version yet. Like, I saw that BBTS got their stock, but... Super 7 themselves, I don't think have, you know, maybe they have their stock yet and they haven't allocated it out for delivery. Um, but that's where I have my order from, you know, so, you know, we're going to be, you know, waiting on that, you know, whenever it comes. I'm definitely looking forward to the regular version, but I think this guy is cool overall, you know, like design choices, notwithstanding a little flecking of paint, notwithstanding, I feel like there's something that feels like a tokusatsu suit here. And uh, I like that. So kudos Super 7 on that, it, it does look cool. I like the, the gold that they used. It's a nice painted gold, it's not like super shiny or anything, but it doesn't look like yellow or anything. It looks like a, a nice gold, so. Um, 
overall, I'm gonna say I like it. You know, there you go. Uh, that's my review. Hope you dug it. Let me know your thoughts down below. And if you could please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Check me out on Facebook and Instagram. This guy's still available on BBTS and I believe Super7.com. So uh, do check it out. I think I think it's worth it. It's cheaper than the um, the Godzilla Ultimate. I think it's 65 bucks. Definitely well worth it. This figure is tremendous. And there you go. Till next time. Peace out, peeps.